Neuroplasticity refers to all those complex changes that occur in the brain in response to a big change out there in the real world. So for example, if we were to start learning yoga for the first time, or drive a car or a new language, all of that leads to a cascade of changes in the brain, starting at the molecular level, going up to changes between cells, or even chunks of the brain communicating with other chunks of the brain in a new and more efficient way. Neuroplasticity is being used to prevent or treat a range of brain disorders, for example, dementia, Parkinson's disease, traumatic brain injury, and even mental illness. Different forms of activity lead to different kinds of neuroplasticity. If you're pumping iron, lifting weights, it leads to structural changes in the back part of the brain, whereas if you're doing brain training, it increases the connectivity between the memory center and the front part of the brain and we want to take advantage of this to develop better and more effective therapies. When the brain is under threat, for example, from a stroke or an injury or dementia, neuroplasticity is vital for the brain to get back to that functional level as quick as possible. Our research at the Brain and Mind Center is showing that as we get older, we can continue to use neuroplasticity to keep the brain healthy and ward off the effects of disease and injury. Neuroplasticity is a really exciting area of research, but it's not a miracle cure. We can't fix every brain disease or disorder. So what we're trying to do in our research is understand it at a scientific level, to the level we can deliver it to the right patient at the right time, and therefore deliver it just like we would any other medicine.